Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. Doing some paint today, so my hands are a little bit dirty, but that's all right. All right, so this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the sine ratio. So you probably in your classes now, you've probably done some um, right triangle trigonometry, um, and you maybe have done the tangent ratio. Uh, maybe not, you haven't done yet, and maybe this is the first one that your teacher is doing. But the sine ratio is, uh, you know, a part of right angle trigonometry. So every single triangle has three sides, obviously, and this is a right triangle. So we can label these three sides with their appropriate name. So this guy right here is kind of the hypotenuse. So I usually just write hype. Directly across, that's always directly across from the right angle. It's always the longest side of the right triangle. Directly across from this angle down here, and this is the angle that I'm labeling with, you know, in relative. Uh, you know, you always pick an angle that you label from this one or this one. So directly across from this angle, that's the opposite side. And then this guy down here, the guy that touches the angle that we're going from, is called the adjacent side. So adjacent with a J, not a Y. All right, so the sine ratio, I'm just going to call this angle A. The sine ratio is the sine of angle A. And I never say sin, but again, that's up to you. I say sine of A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so O over H. So sine of A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this is really useful. So a lot of people get sort of caught up in what sine means. Sine is the ratio of the opposite side of a, tri of a right triangle to the hypotenuse side. That's all it is. That is what it's defined as. That ratio changes with the angle, uh, just like this sign changes with the angle. That's all it is. So don't get obsessed with you know how or where this comes from or what it actually means, because all it means is ratios of sides of triangles. So don't get totally obsessed with it. It's more important for function at this point. So just know that it's useful for finding angles and it's useful for finding side lengths. So let's go through some examples and see how we can use. Um, you know, this sine ratio to solve some questions. So I've got a couple examples here. So this example says determine the sine ratio for each. So anytime you're asked for a ratio, all you're doing is basically writing the fraction or the ratio of opposing sides. That's what ratio, fraction, really similar. All right, so let's label. So let's go from this angle right here. So I didn't really label any of these angles. So I'll, I'll, I'll choose this angle here. That's that's our reference angle. So it's a, that is important to be given that because we need to be able to find it. I'm just going to label that angle. Uh, I'm going to call it theta because a lot of times you see theta used as the angle symbol. Um, so again, we have to label the hypotenuse is up here. And the opposite side is over here, and then this is the adjacent side. So we're interested in opposite over ad adjacent. So sine theta is O over H, which in this case is 3 over 4. And this is your sine ratio. So sine of whatever angle that happens to be is equal to 3 over 4. So this guy will do from this angle. So again, just be careful about uh, what angle you're going from because the hypotenuse never changes but the adjacent and opposite side will depending on what angle we're going from so if we're going from this one this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side so you can see how that's different from this triangle all right so sine and again I'll call that theta sine of theta is equal to opposite 5 over 13 and there it is. So there's my sine, sine uh, ratio. All right, so let's have a look at a, a slightly different version of this question. So question C down at the bottom. So if you look at this, um, we're going to go from this angle down here. And I'm going to call it theta. Um, we have the opposite side, which is 8. We have the adjacent side, which is 6. But we don't have the hypotenuse. So a common question and a common formula used with... Um, this type of question is Pythagorean theorem. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So we often have to use this to be able to solve these questions. So if you look at it, I have the two legs, a and b, but I do not have this guy. So I'll go ahead and find it. So c squared, so 8 squared plus 6 squared. 
60 squared. So this is going to be 64 plus 36. So c squared is equal to 100. Then we take the square root. That's equal to 10. So c equals 10. So that is my hypotenuse side right there. So now what I can do is I can write my sine ratio. So sine of theta now is equal to opposite 8 over hypotenuse 10. And there it is. There's my sine ratio. So, so note, what I see students messing up in this part is, um, you know, trying to make something more out of just determining the sine ratio. All you need is the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. All right, so let's look at what happens if we need to find an angle of a triangle. So finding the angle. So this is our main version of the sine ratio, opposite over hypotenuse. If we want to find the angle, we would use something called the inverse sine function. So if you look on your calculator, and you can see this really clearly, sine is right here. In yellow above mine, it's there's a sine negative one in it. You know, if you check a different, mostly mostly every scientific calculator has it. So if you look at this one, this is a different brand. This is a Casio. The other one was a Texas Instrument. This is a sine, and we have sine negative one. So that sine negative one is called the inverse sine function. So the reason why it's so useful because it allows us to find the angle. So what we do is we rewrite this guy. Theta is equal to sine negative one opposite divided by the hypotenuse side. So it's really useful for finding angles of triangles if you have the ratios of their sides. So let's look how we use it. So we're going from we're going from this angle right down here. I've got it highlighted already here in purple. And then I'm going to call it theta. So the first thing we do in these situations is label the triangle. So this is the opposite side, this is the hypotenuse, this is the right angle, and that's the adjacent side. So again, we're looking for this. So I always like to write this guy first, then write this guy, but a lot of people like to jump right to that. That's just a personal habit. I like to write that first. So sine theta is equal to opposite. That shouldn't be theta. That's just an O. 21 over 29. So that's my opposite over my hypotenuse. So then we use our inverse function. So sine negative 1 equal to 21 over 29. So guys, I've seen this a lot, and I've even seen some teachers do this, and I want you to just avoid this, avoid this, you know, I would call it a misconception, I guess you'd call it, is dividing both sides by S-I-N. So that's not where this comes from, okay? These, this is not reciprocal or dividing both sides. These are inverses of each other. So that's a uh, more complicated topic for another day, but all you need to know is you have to use that second function on your calculator. So the inverse sine function. And this thing has a whole branch of trigonometry to itself. So, uh, you know, it's, it's another topic. It's one of those things in math you kind of just, well, I don't know the full story, but I kind of know how it works, right? So sine negative 1, and I go 21 over 29, and then I get back an angle of 46 degrees. So 46 degrees is a bit my angle. So, you can see, guys, if I now, if I want to check this, if I go sine 46, well, I'll, I'll do sine answer just for, you know, uh, to get as many decimal places as I can. So I get that number. If I do 29 or 21 divided by 29, look, I get the exact same answer. So that's all a sine function is. Sine of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. That's all it is. So you can see sine of an angle gives you that ratio. So it's unique for a particular triangle with certain angles, right? So let's go ahead and try it again. So we're doing this angle over here. So we're at a different angle. So it's important again, label your triangle. That's the hypotenuse crossing the right angle, opposite side. And then touching the angle is the adjacent side. So we're looking for opposite over hypotenuse. So sine, call it theta again, sine theta is equal to opposite 48 over 50. So theta is equal to sine negative 1, 48 over 50. Just like that. So now it's a calculator question. 
So I'll do second function, sine negative 1, 48 over 50. And then you get an angle of 74 degrees. So that is one of the useful things of sine, is that you can do uh, these complicated, you know, uh, triangle problems where you can find some angles and things like that. All right, let's look at it, uh, the other possible scenario, which is finding the side length of a triangle, of a right triangle. So if you look at this guy, I've got a side missing. So I've got an X. Now in the past, you probably said, well, I do Pythagorean theorem. The only problem is we don't have this other leg. We have an angle given instead. So what we have to do is we first have to identify what we're given. So we're given the angle. We're also given the opposite side. And we're, we're looking for the hypotenuse side. So that's how I know I have to use the sine ratio. is because I have the opposite. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. And I have the angle. So what I have, I'll just write sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So it's sort of like the general form of it. Now I can fill in what I have. My theta is 25. So sine 25 degrees is equal to opposite 10 over x. So I like to use x. Some people like to leave the h in there. Personally, I like x, but whatever you, want, you guys want to use. So how I solve these is I use cross multiplication, but I use what I, I don't, I need to come up with a name for this. But basically, I just switch the spots, the old switcheroo, I guess you can call it. Um, that'll make one of my students very proud if, I, if they was watching this video. So I switch these two sp spots. So I get x over 10 is equal to sine 25. So that's a very, very useful mathematic technique for sol solving things when you have an x on the bottom. So I switch the spots directly across the equal sign. So now I can just go ahead and put this in my calculator. So 10 divided by sine 25, and I get 23.7. So I get x is equal to 23.7 units. And there it is. So that's a you know a fairly straightforward question. Let's try you know a very similar question to that. So again, we have the opposite side given to us. We're looking for the hypotenuse, and we're given this angle of 41 degrees here. So I'll set this one up. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So we have sine 41 degrees is equal to 18 over x. Then I pull the old switcheroo, switch these spots. So x is equal to 18 over sine 41. And then I just take my calculator out. 18 divided by sine of 41. And you get 27. 27.4 units. So that's the length of this side right here. All right, so the other scenario is where I have an X on the top. So I just want to show you that example because I just want to contrast this example where your X is on the bottom and then the example when the X is on the top. So I've got a triangle here where the X is now the opposite side. So that's the scenario. And the known side is the hypotenuse. So again, this is sine because we're looking for the opposite. We have the hypotenuse and we're given the angle. So sine, I'll fill in all the stuff now right away instead of writing the the formula. So sine of 21, so sine of the angle, is equal to the opposite side, x, over the hypotenuse 7. So we don't have to pull the old switcheroo here. We just basically do, um, you know, cross multiplication. So x is equal to 7 times sine 21. So one thing, guys, that you could do if you wanted to work sine 21 as a decimal, but I don't like to do that. I find it's easier to write sine 21 down, and that way I can just put it right in my calculator. So 7 times sine 21, and it gives you back the most accurate answer I can possibly get. So I get 2.5 units for that one. All right, last guy. So again, this triangle is oriented a little bit differently. So I got 16 degrees up here. I've got a hypotenuse of 40. I'm looking for the opposite side. So again, sine, sine, the angle, 16 degrees, is equal to opposite x, this guy, over hypotenuse 40. So now it's just a multiplication question. x is equal to sine, well, all right, 40 times sine 16 degrees. So 40 
times sine 16 and it gives you back 11 units. Alright guys, there it is. That is the sine ratio. Hopefully this helps you on your journey to be able to conquer trigonometric uh, ratios. And uh, there's a lot more trig in your future if you're doing pre-calculus or calculus. So thanks for watching. See you guys in class. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.